Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeon. And on today's edition, uh, we'll be looking at some of the big stories doing the rounds in regards to Arsenal Football Club. And we'll be reflecting on that 3-0 victory over Fiorentina in Charlotte, North Carolina uh, on Saturday evening. Going to start off there. Uh, as it makes sense, we're going to do things in chronological order today. Arsenal, of course, with a 3-0 win over Italian side at Fiorentina. It was an impressive victory in the end. And Unai Emery decided to go with a, a far uh, more youthful selection than the one he did uh, against Bayern Munich just a few days ago. Um, there was nine changes from that 11 uh, that started that game against Munich. A really, really youthful uh, midfield and attack with an average age, actually, of 18 and a half. It was a back three um, of Chambers, Mustafi, Monreal. I kind of hoped that the back three thing would uh, would go away this season, but it appears that Unai Emery, um, you know, is very adamant to uh, have his team drilled in that system too, so that I guess he can switch between a back four and a back five or back three, whatever you want to call it, um, sort of during games and depending on of course, who we're playing against. It was a really, really young midfield of uh, Ole Yinka and Burton. Those two were holding the fort there in the middle of the park. And the front three was uh, Reese Nelson, Eddie Nketiah and Bukayo Saka. Perhaps a glimpse into the future of the Arsenal forward line. Now, Arsenal got off to a great start. Uh, 15 minutes into the game, the Gunners took the lead through Eddie Nketiah. Um, and it was kind of a theme of the early parts of the game, actually. Ser Kolasinac bursting forward on that left-hand side, as he does. Um, he, he linked brilliantly with Bukayo Saka out there. He uh, played a lovely little uh, sort of one-two with him uh, for the goal. And then Kolasinac looked to find Nketiah in the middle. And actually, the pass wasn't a good one. It was a poor one. Uh, but fortunately for us, the ball deflected into Nketiah's path. And he showed incredible composure to just take a touch, shift it past the defender, um, open up the space for himself and just fire it low into the bottom corner. Uh, there were some concerns, though, over Arsenal's defence, which, you know... I guess we've come to get used to and, and, you know, you could argue that a back three of Chambers, Mustafi, Monreal isn't our first choice, back three, etc, etc. Um, but it's just the shape for me that's a worry. And I know these are only pre-season friendlies and as much as you shouldn't get carried away by the positives, you shouldn't really dwell on the negatives either. So I get that. Um, but, you know, there are real concerns about Arsenal defensively and we're being told that the William Saliba deal is done and that William Saliba will become an Arsenal player, although he will return to St Etienne on loan for another season. So, as I've said repeatedly on this podcast for, for weeks now, happy that we're looking to the future, happy that we're, uh, you know, in the running to sign one of Europe's top defensive prospects. But does it fix our issues here and now? Not necessarily. And that is a concern. And that continues to be a concern for me. Uh, Arsenal doubled their lead on the 65th minute. Again, Eddie Nketiah with the finish. Nice bit of play on the right-hand side from Henrik Mkhitaryan. Um, Fiorentina were unhappy with it because they felt that Carl Jenkinson blocked off one of their players when Mkhitaryan was uh, sort of creating space for himself on the right. He cut the ball back to Alexander Lacazette, who could have shot himself, but was very uh, unselfish and squared the ball to Enketia, letting him get his second of the evening. And again, Enketia finished it as if he's been doing this for years. Expert finish, really composed and, and really pleasing to see. Lots and lots of positives uh, from some of the young players, of course, uh, on Saturday evening. There was positives too from Gabriel Martinelli. Now he, um, and I'm sure you've probably seen the clip flying around even if you haven't seen the whole game. I didn't see the whole game uh, live. I saw it afterwards. I was working on Saturday night, but I did watch the game back yesterday. Um, and I've seen the highlights a couple of times too. And I guess one of the standout highlights, and I'm sure lots of you have seen it, as I said, whether you've watched the game or not, will be that run from Gabriel Martinelli where he picked up the ball. He went past, I think it was about three defenders, but he just done it with such directness, such pace and power um, and broke through the defence, but unable to find the finish. His, his shot uh, was just wide of the post. He sort of opened his right foot up and tried to put it into that bottom corner. Um, and, you know, I've seen comparisons on social media to Theo Walcott there. And I know it's really harsh to judge Gabriel Martinelli just yet. Uh, and I'm not going to judge him based on that moment. But 
when people compare it to Theo Walcott, I think they mean the fact that he is so dangerous, so direct, so powerful, so quick, yet lacks a little bit of composure um, in the sort of goal scoring position. But what you have to say about Gabriel Martinelli is he's very, very young, very, very raw, and that is in no way a reflection of his talent. Um, just an unfortunate moment for Gabriel Martinelli. But being the way social media is these days, you were always going to get those comparisons, weren't you? Um, Arsenal then uh, made it 3-0 on 88 minutes. Joe Willock uh, got this one. But again, it was another assist from Alexander Lacazette. Again, probably had an opportunity to shoot himself, but decided to slip in Joe Willock, who uh, sort of finished it emphatically into the roof of the net almost he just hooked it over the goalkeeper it was a great powerful finish and it wrapped up what was a, a good victory for the Arsenal um, I didn't think that the performance was as good at times as that against Bayern Munich which is weird because Bayern Munich did have a real period of dominance against us but of course we were playing a different caliber of opponent today um, not to take anything away from Fiorentina but they're a very young side they're a side who had Lots of issues towards the back end of last season. In fact, almost suffered relegation, um, which was unthinkable when, you know, around Christmas time, we were talking about Fiorentina uh, getting a European place. So Fiorentina aren't a great side, in my opinion, but that shouldn't take away from the fact that these Arsenal youngsters have shown up and they've, you know, done really, really well. And although this is pre-season and it doesn't really replicate the intensity of a, a huge game and the pressure, etc. There are lots and lots of Arsenal fans on this US tour who are following the club around the country. And there is still a pressure there. Maybe not the same pressure that you get in the Premier League or in the Europa League or in the Champions League, etc. But there is a pressure to deliver uh, from these young Arsenal players. And, you know, they deserve lots and lots of praise. But saying that, you need to not get carried away with performances in pre-season two because we've seen time and time again uh, young Arsenal players burst onto the scene in pre-season but be unable to replicate that form throughout the season and perhaps not always due to a fault of their own perhaps because they've not always been given the opportunities that some of us feel they deserve. Um, but it is pre-season. Um, it is an exciting build-up to the season and of course we have another game coming up Wednesday at midnight Real Madrid versus Arsenal. That one, you know, I'm excited about. And like I said, after the Bayern Munich game, I'm always excited to see Arsenal play against top, top opposition. So there is the Bayern Munich game, uh, sorry, Real Madrid game coming up on the 24th of July. That's our last one in the States. We also play Barnet that day um, here in London at the Hive in Edgware. Uh, so I'm not sure what type of Arsenal team you're going to get there if you're going to that. Um, but, you know, None of the players that are involved in the US tour will be there. Um, so just bear that in mind if you're thinking about going. Um, they've put a note on Arsenal.com too saying the Arsenal 11 will consist mainly of under 23 and under 18s players. Uh, then we take on Leon in the Emirates Cup on the 28th of July at 3.15 uh, before travelling to France to play Angers. I think that's how you say it. Um, a mate of mine calls them Angers, but I'm pretty sure that's not how you say it. Um, and then we finish off uh, with a game against Barcelona in the Camp Nou on Sunday, the 4th of August in the Joan Gamper Trophy. Um, and then we kick off our season a week later uh, against Newcastle United at St. James's Park. So there's a little lowdown on what's left uh, in this pre-season uh, calendar for the Gunners. Um, and yeah, pretty pleasing performance overall against Fiorentina. Uh, but I'll be paying more attention, I think, uh, to the game against Real Madrid uh, coming up in just a couple of days' time. In other news, Alex Iwobi has been quick uh, to squash the rumours that he'll be looking for a move away from the Arsenal if they're to sign the likes of Wilfred Zaha or Everton Suarez. Um, Alex Iwobi said the, that he's up for the fight. The only time I would consider leaving is if I'm not playing as much as I would like to. Obviously, my joy is to play football and not just sit out. If it comes to that, I would have no choice but to leave. But I'd always put up a fight to play as that is what I've done all my life. We have big stars already, so by adding another one, I'll just have to prove I can do better than them. Alex Iwobi, of course, returning uh, to the setup late, having played at the African Nations and having played very well, actually. Um, he's earned lots of plaudits throughout that tournament, so credit to him. And, uh, you know, the question is, is Alex Iwobi 
uh, you know, good enough to start in that Arsenal team week in, week out. I guess I'm probably swaying more to the side of no at the moment. But what I will say, and to Alex Iwobi's credit, and to Unai Emery's credit too, Alex Iwobi improved a great deal last season. He was given lots of opportunities, and I think he'd done uh, relatively well. So, fingers crossed, we'll have a much more improved, experienced player uh, going into this new season. And, you know, I certainly don't want Alex Iwobi to leave. Um, but I do think that, you know, he's done absolutely the right thing here by coming out and squashing these rumours quickly um, and not allowing this saga to rumble on, not allowing his relationship with the supporters to, to be damaged by reports. He came out straight away, uh, retweeted the tweet with a caption saying, fake news, clickbait, blah, blah, blah. Great to see. Um, so well done, Alex Iwobi on that very pleased uh, to see that from my perspective anyway uh, in other news we keep hearing the William Saliba deal is done not heard anything official yet there was talks that it would be announced on Tuesday or that the medical was taking place uh, this Tuesday so that would be tomorrow conflicting reports not sure exactly which to believe but we're hoping that at some point this week we'll hear that that deal is done uh, Arsenal are supposedly set to go back in for a third bid uh, for Kieran Tierney, apparently an agreement still hasn't been reached between Arsenal and Celtic. Um, so we'll hold tight on that one. Uh, talks today about Thomas Vermeilen uh, being a free agent and whether we'd take him back, given that we're in desperate need of centre-backs. Would you take him back? Let me know in the comments section below. Thomas Vermeilen, of course, former Gunners central defender, uh, went on to play for Barcelona, um, but is now a free agent. Would you have him? Let me know what you think on that. We'll be uh, back tomorrow with another video. Uh, but if you're enjoying the content brought to you by Sofa Sports Media, we'll be hosting our first Premier League debate show this evening um, on our YouTube channel, which is Sofa Sports Media. Um, we'll be touching on three topics on a weekly basis, myself and two regular panellists. Um, we'll be asking for your thoughts and your contributions across our social media pages. Um, and I believe on the agenda this week, we're talking Manchester United, uh, we're talking Spurs, and we are talking Newcastle United. So some really interesting, uh, rounded Premier League subjects. If you haven't already, uh, head over to Sofa Sports Media and subscribe to our channel. Follow us on all the social media platforms. And uh, I hope to see some of you guys over there this evening. Until then, take care.